Hey there. So now I'm going to show you how to make simple cups and maybe a small vase using a, a slab technique. It's fairly simple. Throwing out slabs can be a little difficult um, to, to practice, um, but you, it, that's exactly what you need. You need practice. So I'm just going to show you some interesting ways to get texture onto slabs. If I can untangle this little goodie here, um, I'm going to try to get this out of here. Yep, there we go. We're making progress. So this is a spring that I have stretched out and you can get any spring, no matter what size and stretch it out and use it for this technique. So I am just about done with that. And um, once I have this spring worked out, you'll see how exciting this can be. So this is the first texture technique that I'm going to show you. If I get this out. Let's see. Probably should have had this done before I started recording, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of home. It's, it's, it's more friendly this way. We all get a chance to see that everybody has a moment. <laughs> okay, I'm getting closer. I'm feeling it. And it's good. It's good. It's almost there. Okay, we're there. We are there. So here's my spring. And I'm going to use an area of the spring that is, has a variety of different um, movements in it, different uh, frequencies of, of bend. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just uh, tip this down so you can see there's the clay I'm going to be working with. So to, to start with, I'm going to make some blocks of clay with some texture, and then I'm going to stretch them and make it more interesting texture. Now, when you're doing a spring cut like this, it, how you move the, the, the spring through the clay will determine the pattern the spring makes. So I've, got, I've rocked it back and forth, and now I'm just going to pull one side and make a big curve, and you'll see that in the result. See, I, I did a little rocking and then I made a big curve and that works for both sides. So I'm gonna take this larger piece here and we'll see that stretched out. So I'll take that one. I have some other pieces here. That, uh, this is clay, it's really stiff. So stretching it out is gonna be interesting. So now what I'm gonna do is one of my favorite texture techniques and it's my favorite because it really is beautiful and it's super effective. And it, it's simple, very, very simple. So that involves just a simple stick and it's just a piece of wood, but I've taped some, you can see I've taped some, some uh, <coughs> um, plastic tape on it so it makes it look like a tool. So, and the thing you want with your piece of wood is you want one really sharp edge there. That's what you want to use. And then you're just going to hit the wood again and again and again and again and again. And what I can tell you is the more you hit it in one place, the better. And this is especially true if you're going to use a colored slip, which I'm not going to do this time, but you can, um, if you hit it again and again in the same spot over and over again, the clay actually starts to fold over on itself. And what happens then is when the clay folds over on itself, it seals off some parts. So if you paint like a red slip on it, then when you stretch it out, you'll have red and white lines, kind of like a zebra or something. So that's what we're doing here. I'm just, I'm just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And I'll show it to you when I'm done here. And this is quite a nice texture, but what it will become when I, when I stretch it out is going to be even more exciting. And texture is something I love. I just love a good texture. I will go a long way to just to get some some something textured. Going over it a little bit more. Let me show you what that looks like. It looks like this. Top is mushroomed a little bit, so I might just kind of push in those edges just a little bit. Okay, and there it is. It's a, just a beautiful textured um, uh, piece there, a little place where I pushed it a little bit with my hands. So now I have two textured blocks sitting here, 
and I'm going to make a third one. Now, this last one is kind of interesting. It's much more subtle, and uh, it's a great way to get working with just making a few impressions and then watching what they become when you stretch them out. So I'm going to just push in with this stick. I'm going to use this stick in a number of different ways. And I don't need too much, but some. And maybe I can push a bit like that. So that's a start. And, you know, I'm looking, I just kind of pick things up and uh, see what would might work. So I'm going to just push a little bit in there. And maybe I tend to do too much. Whoops, kind of I really did too much there. But let's take a look and see what that turns out to look like. Here's what I just made. Some interesting pattern there. And then, or textures, then I'm just gonna lay that. Now what I'm gonna do is stretch them out. And I gotta talk to you about that because when you stretch a slab, there's definitely a way to do it. And um, normally you flip a slab of piece of clay over and over do both sides, but with these textures, you can only do one side. And when I throw, you'll see me throw the clay down. I'm going to throw it and you'll see it land towards me. And I'll, I'll do one this way so you can see it as well. And when I throw it, I'm going to aim for the middle. When I throw it down, I'm going to aim for the middle here. So it's going to come down and hit right in the middle. So from the side, what you would see is it coming down and hitting right in the middle and stretching that way. You do want it to hit in the front, and you don't want it to hit in the back. And so you can think about a plane landing. When an airplane lands, it touches the back wheels first, and those back wheels are right in the middle of the plane, and then the nose sets down, and that's what you want. Because if it comes in like this, of course, it's not good for anybody. And if it comes in and it hits the tail end first, it just boom, boom. So, and so if you hit the front, it crumples up. If you hit the back, you start to get a very thin edge with a big rounded bit in the middle. So you have to hit it right in the middle. And let's see if I stand over here, I should be able to do that so that you can see it. And you want to use your soft hands, you want to avoid leaving marks on the clay. So I'm going to start by hitting right, right in the middle. It sounds a little bit loud, especially with the speaker on the table. You want to avoid flipping it over and hitting things. That was not good but I want to aim right in the middle. And maybe you can see it doing that. It's, it's actually hitting in the middle and you can hear it. And it, whoops, I flipped it over again. It's stretching out, which is really nice. And I can turn it sideways and stretch it out in another direction as well. And what you should see is that these marks that I've made will become more and more expressive. You can draw on it and your drawings will become more expressive. My favorite so far is those three little pushed in areas. See how soft they're getting, like little windows? That's very nice. So, and I'm just stretching it out. And this clay is really stiff, so I'm really hitting it hard. I'm really slamming it down as I stretch it across the clay. And I want to get it fairly thin because what I'm going to make with this is a cup. And when you make a cup, you don't want it to be too thick. You want it to be kind of light or light-ish, especially a hand-built cup. It's really easy to get them too thick. So I'm just stretching it out some more. I've moved in front of the camera. You can see it's really getting quite large. And the nice thing about this uh, clay being pretty dry and stiff is that I can get it thinner, easier. And the other thing I can do is as I decide what size to make, I can take a piece, cut it out, and then stretch it some more. So I will do that eventually. Let's set this aside now and stretch out another one. Let's start with the spring one here now. We're gonna do the spring one. And maybe to start with, I'll slam the clay just flat down. And there's a reason for that. Clay is fixotropic means it loves water, it has lots of water in it. And when you slam it down, all the water molecules inside the clay jiggle and it makes the clay a little softer. So stiff clay becomes softer. And now I'm gonna start the stretching. And this means that I'm aiming for the middle. I'm always aiming for the middle. And the reason it's taking, I have to throw it a lot is because it's dry, it's stiffer. 
which I like. It's going to be easier to build with. And you can see that that, that spring cut pattern is becoming very expressive. And I'll just move back in front of the camera this way. And you can see, I, I actually am, I bring it out, I swing it out and I, I bring it in, to, in for a landing, so to speak. And so again, I'm gonna leave it for now and we will revisit it. So now I'm gonna do this last one and you can see what this texture looks like. So here it comes. Turning it 90 degrees each time. You can see that that hit pattern is getting really beautifully expressive. It's a really wonderful texture. This is just three of 50 different texture techniques we can learn about, but this is a good start. There's plenty to work with. And these are small enough projects that you can work on them at home. And you can work with a smaller piece of clay too, because, um, you don't need much. Let me show you what you will need. We'll just leave that there for now. So if I'm going to make a cup, I can decide that's a pretty good size of, for a cup. It's going to shrink, so we got to keep that in mind. And then maybe I've got a, a little newspaper wrapped around this tapered form. And the tapered form is a, an old uh, table leg, which is a nice source, a nice way to get table, tapered forms. So, um, so uh, I'll take this. And I'll wrap the clay around it, and I can. I know I can get this out because it's tapered, and that I leave. I, I cover it with newspaper because the clay would stick to this um, like uh, lacquered leg here. So that's what I'm going to use. So if I am going to use this as my form, I need to know how big a piece of clay to cut for wrapping around this. And the way we can find that out is I'm gonna use the thickest part here and I'm gonna go around it like this. See, and I've taken that little coil and I pinch it off where it meets and that gives me the measurement I need. So I'm gonna set this aside and now I'm gonna decide which one I wanna use. Let's start with this one. Here, so I'm gonna use the first one that we stretched out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, see how long I need it to be to wrap around. And then how tall do I want it? I probably only want it to be about that big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, see, I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna cut it here. And I'm gonna cut it here. So just the areas that I want. So here's what I've got. There's the piece and I could just wrap that around, but I want it to be a little lighter, a little thinner. And once it's smaller, it's easier to throw lighter and lighter to throw it out and make it thinner. And then I'll just recut it one more time. So I'll keep that over there, my measurement coil. And I'll just take this, let me stretch it. I can make it a little bit, um, maybe a little bit taller. And a little bit this way. So it's just thinning out a little bit, very nicely. It's thinning out really lovely. You do wanna be careful about not making too many marks with your hands 
on it. So this is getting nice and thin. I'll try one more. Yeah, it's getting really thin. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna measure how much clay do I have? How much clay do I need? Cut off the excess. I can use this for something else. And when I cut, I'm actually, I should tell you what I do when I cut here. So what I do is I cut like that. And I don't cut all the way through. And then I can peel it up and it tears and it leaves a nice little deckled edge, which is a kind of nice feature. So that's more than enough clay uh, to get around this whole piece, right? So, and then the last thing I need is I need um, a bottle. I'm just gonna take a little bit of clay here and I'm gonna make it into a bottle. So this is again, really stiff clay. So I'm, I'm pounding it a little bit rather than, than hitting it with my hands into a ball to start with. And then I'll, I'll do the final thing to make a ball. So now I have a ball, just about. So we're about done with the cup and then I'm gonna show you the vase. So let's go with the cup. So to start with, I'm just gonna kind of patty cake it. Patty cake it, that should be a verb. I don't think it really is. And if you have a little dish shape, it'd be nice to put that in there. Um, I want it kind of thick because I'm going to trim a foot on it. Um, I have over here, I believe, yes, um, just very convenient. I have a little dish shape that I made years ago, and I can just put this in there. And I know that that's big enough to, to serve as a base for this foot. So now I'm thinking about joining. So joining is always about scoring and slipping. We all know that. You've got to, in order to join something, you have to score it extensively. So I'm going to score everything around me. So and watch how I think through this. I'm going to score the bottom here. Lots of scoring. There we go. That's pretty good. That's really well scored. And then um, where am I, which is going to be the bottom and which is going to be the top? I think this is going to be the bottom. So I'm going to score this right at the bottom here, just a little bit. And then it's going to wrap around. And I'm going to want this to be the outside edge and this is going to be the inside edge. So I'm going to score this too. And what I usually find is that this is too, this ends up being too big, uh, too long would be my bet that when I'm done with all this, it's gonna to be too long. So I flipped it over and now I'm scoring the other part. So when I wrap it around, it's gonna join up. So, but I think, let me just check it real quick and see if indeed it is a little, well, it's, it's pretty good actually. I think I can keep that. It's pretty, you getting that, but I think it's gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do now is do the slip part. So I have, you know, slip is just the clay that you've been using mixed with water. So this is the little scraps I've made and I'm mixing it with water. You know, just lots of slip. You don't want to leave any of that scoring unslipped. You got to get lots of slip in there so you don't trap any air. And we have uh, the base we're going to slip. And then what I will do is I will I'm going to put this on my my little le chair leg section here, wrap it around. Then I'll attach it to the bottom. Those are all the things I'm going to do here. So first step, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to, I'm going to have the bottom part, uh, or the narrowest part of the leg at the bottom, so that'll become a kind of, um, it'll be very much like a funnel -y, uh, it'll kind of open outward a little bit, not much, but a little bit. And I'm gonna just roll it on the table to close this area up. I wanna get a good join here. And I, I, it's okay, I'm okay with that seam. I'm gonna leave that seam right where it is. 
and push out all the air and get a nice joint. And then I'm going to take this and put it here. Now, there's a couple of reasons for using the narrow section uh, at the bottom. One is I really like it if it opens up just subtly a little bit. The other reason for that is that um, if we uh, if you realize, I've got to take that, you can never leave this in because as the clay dries, it shrinks. And if you leave that in, it will crack. So I have to take it out. And if I did it the other way where it was wider at the bottom than it was at the top, well, then it wouldn't come out. It would be trapped in there forever. Think about it. It would make sense there. So now what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out the bottom. Um, I'm just getting rid of excess clay here. I'm going to take that all the way around. And you can see for most of my cutting, I'll either use a needle tool or I'll use a fettling knife. Either way, those both work. And now I'm going to take um, a, a, this is a, a half of a steel rib. And I can use a rubber rib or a steel rib to do this part, which is I'm going to just join the two together by wiping the bottom clay up into the piece. Now I have a very thick bottom on there and I can, I can just kind of roll it and that will help shape, shape the bottom the way I want it. And since I made it thick, now if I made it thin, I could just call it done, but I've made it thick. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to cut and trim it. And I can't do it right now because everything's too soft. So I'll let it, I'll let it dry up. And then when it, um, when it gets uh, uh, leather hard, uh, kind of a medium leather hard, I will cut into it and, and trim a foot. Right now I'm just trimming the top edge to make it somewhat even. And let's see what that looks like. There we go. And so uh, if you want to see um, how I trim it, I demonstrate that on another video that's right here in this collection, where you'll see how I make little tiny um, sake cups, little we know me. So now um, you can see I've pretty much finished this. I can didn't perfect, I just want, don't want to mar the texture. I just pull that right out. There it is. And if I'm lucky, and I believe I will be, I can get this newspaper so it can live for yet another project. No, I'm not worried about, well, you know, it's nice to conserve, but also why have to make another newspaper? Uh, why surround it again with newspaper? Add, add that in on there and use it again. So that's ready for another one. Um, now, a couple of uh, final touches here. I will take um, a paddle and very gently just tap it and that will even up the top a little bit. Maybe just make it a little bit more. And it's a little bit thicker right here where where the two pieces overlap. So I'm just gonna squeeze that down and you can see this is what it looks like at the top right now. And then watch this next trick because one of the things for me in making uh, forms and designing things, one of the things I'm concerned about is I want a, um, a form like this to have a finale, a finish. I want it, when we get to the end, I want you to know it. I want the eye to go, oh, okay, that's the stop. That's where it all ends. So I need some kind of detail up here that that's arrests the eye a little bit. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna score. This is kind of a fun technique um, that uh, works really nicely. Score this and slip it. Make sure we're still pretty, pretty level. Score and slip it again. Score it and slip it. And I want to score inside a bit. Just get down there a little bit. You'll see why.
and I'll score outside. So this makes a nice uh, tumbler. Uh, they're a delight to use. A little bit of a, a liner glaze, maybe something on the outside, but you don't have to for a wood kiln. And it'll be a nice uh, piece. Then I'm gonna take my slip and really saturate that with slip. I want it to be super wet. I want a really good, easy joint without pushing too hard. So I'm gonna get lots of slip in there. It's a relatively thin, a very, relatively light cup. It's kind of a fine little piece to play with. And then um, I'm gonna take this little scrap that has a little nice texture to it from our earlier, I trimmed this off the piece and I'm gonna just take that and stretch it. You see, it's quite thick. It's got some interesting texture on it. I'll check and see how much I'm gonna need. I'll just measure this kind of roughly. I need about that much. So I need just a little bit longer. And I want this to be super thin. I want this to be really thin. That's good. There we go. So that's nice and thin. You can see that. Look at that, love the way that texture is kind of stretched out and even started to, to break up. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, how long is that? That's about what I need. So I'm going to start here. And first, before I do that, I, again, scoring and slipping is everything. I do a lot of scoring and slipping. So I'm just going to scoring, slipping, and dropping my tool. So here we go. Scoring and slipping. It's very thin, so I don't want to push too hard on the, on the scoring tool. This is a scoring tool. It's about half of a onion slicer. Uh, these are uh, found in, in gourmet cooking sites, websites probably, maybe in stores, but uh, it's an onion slicer. You put it in a half cut onion and then you can pass your knife through the little edges and make really thin cuts of onion. I think that's how it's used. They're harder and harder to find, but they make fantastic scoring tools. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Just slip that up there. Lots of slip. Remember, so lots of slip. I don't want any air trapped in this. And this is a pretty big opera operation that I'm going to take this wide little slab here and I'm going to wrap it over the edge for a detail. Here we go. So I go around and I'm just going to gently, not leaving any marks on the clay as I do this, just gently get it in shape first. Just in shape all the way around. And what you'll see when I'm done with this is that I have created a really nice finish for the piece. And I have to be careful because if it gets too chubby, if it gets too fat, what ends up happening is you um, can't, it can't drink out of it without spilling. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to now uh, join everything. And then I'm going to have to kind of just squeeze it down just a little bit as I go. I may lose some of the texture in it, but I'll keep that edge. I won't let my fingers go over the edge. And there's a little crack here, which actually may enhance the quality of the piece. I might like that detail. So I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. And also there'll be a kind of a nice, um, it, it's kind of exciting the way the, um, the line isn't completely parallel. The line of this lip goes deeper and, and it, goes, it kind of undulates a little bit, which is really quite nice. So that's all very nice kind of design considerations that you, you sort of discover as you work. I don't worry about the slip uh, coming down. I can get rid of that in a minute. You don't necessarily wipe out a seam from where it all joins together kind of like that. Again, a nice detail. 
So here's what it looks like. Kind of a little finish there. It's getting a little long in the tooth right about there. I might do something with that, I'm not sure, but it's all finished now. So now the next step happens when it gets leather hard, when I can come back around. And I'm just gonna see, usually this is where I mess it up, but I'm just gonna see if I can take some of that extra detail off there. Yeah, it came off nicely. And then pretty nicely, get rid of that extra. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dry this up and then take out the little drips of slip because the slip has some dimension to it. So if I just leave it there, it's gonna actually affect, it'll, it'll be a solid form of, of clay there. So there it is. And then I'll put a foot on it and the foot will look something like what we saw. You know, you'll see this in another uh, video. I have some choices. I wanna be careful on a tall form like this that when I carve the foot, it stays almost as wide as the form. I don't want it to be too small a foot or it'll easily knock over, um, which is not really that functional. So this is one style of foot that I could do on the bottom of it once it gets leather hard. And here's another style here. Hi. Here's another style of foot. So next, um, real quickly, what I'm gonna do, you can see me carving those feet in the video on uh, We Know Me, little sake cups, whiskey jars. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a vase. Here's a, here's a nice, uh, same chair leg, only uh, it's more section of it. It's a little taller section of it. So I'm gonna make a vase um, here. And uh, I can see I have a really nice uh, bit of uh, clay here. So uh, let me see how much clay I need to make a vase. So same technique. I roll a little coil. Here's, here's one here. And I'll see at the very bottom here, I need that much clay. And so that's, that's one measure. I need that much clay. And at the top, I'm gonna eyeball it a little bit here because at the top, I need a little, a little more than that. Let's see, let's get this a little longer. But what I wanna eyeball, when you wrap clay around a cylinder, you need a kind of a, a different kind of shape, like a fan shape. So I'm gonna eyeball that. So here is the top, that's the top length. I'm gonna put that up here. And I'm gonna use the, um, the wood strike uh, texture there. Let's see if that's a good, that's a good thing. So now, what I'm gonna do is um, just cut out the clay here, the clay that I need, and I'm cutting it in a kind of a fan shape you'll see in a minute here. And this is gonna be right at the center there. Cut this out, like that. Then I'm gonna connect the dots. And I'm gonna do one other thing too. Notice again, I am, I am only cutting partially through and then tearing the clay to get that deckled edge effect. And I never throw any of that scrap clay away because who knows, I may need it for something. I may not, but there's always a possibility. And here's the piece that I've made. So here's the piece right here. You can see that little fan shape. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is it's okay to make it a little bit thinner. I don't need the vase to be that thin because it's not gonna be lifted up to drink with, but it's okay to, to thin it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna stretch it out. And you can get a sense that how important it is to develop your skills of stretching, of, of actually working with clay uh, and stretching out a slab like this. And I'm now I'm just gonna check and see if I've, you know, I'm still pretty good there. It's gotten a little wider, but I think it's okay. And then here, I think it might've gotten a lot. No, it's about the same up there. So that's good. So again, I'm gonna go through some of the same things we did with the, um, with the, cup, but it's a little bit different now because I want a flat bottom and I'm not going to carve the bottom. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take this piece here and I'll kind of get it more in camera range here so you can see it. Scoring and slipping, always, always, always. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of this here and I kind of like that's really nice right there. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to cut it a little larger than I need it just in case. I'm just going to eyeball it around, make a bigger circle all the way around. And again, and then, so there's the textured piece I've made. And I'm going to get a piece of wood, because we'll need that. Here's a piece of wood, and I'm just going to take this textured part and put it face down. That's pretty important. And um, then I'm going to score and slip it like usual. Always scoring and slipping over a broader area than I think I'll need, just in case. I don't want to miss anything. So when I score and slip in two directions, I really, with the scoring, what the scoring does is it, it kind of quadruples the amount of uh, area that the join has, because instead of a flat area, it's going like this. And um, so that's really good. And then it makes these ridges and valleys so that when you put the slip in it, everything gets nice and soft and lots of slip gets in there. So it softens everything, which is really cool. That's really helpful. I like that. And then, so, and the slip has two functions. One, it's softening everything so, and it's, it's making it a better join. But the other thing that it's doing, which is super important, is it's making sure that no air gets trapped in those scoring marks. Because, you know, trapped air is, is, is death to uh, a ceramic piece. You cannot trap air. And now I'm looking at these edges and I'm deciding which one goes on the outside and which one goes on the inside. And this one has a nice decal to it. This one I cut, cut a little deep. So this one's going inside. I don't need to see that anymore. So I'm gonna just score that. And this will make a lovely vase. I like these little, little tapered vases. Um, they really look beautiful. And uh, I always have one in a quiet place in my home and you know, get a little flower out of the garden and just leave it there like guests come over. I might put it in the bathroom right by the sink and it's just a lovely accent. Listen to me, I'm just telling you all these little, little housekeeping games and such. So now I'm scoring on the backside, which is very nice. And lots of scoring. So now take this. So these are a couple of nice projects. All of these are small enough. You can easily work on them at home and, and experiment with them and play with them. I'll make a few. I'm going to show you how to make a, put this on the base and I'll show you how to um, actually, um, once you get it on the base, you, how to um, make a top for it. And then a thing called uh, that the, the Japanese called Mimi, which is Japanese for ears, some little um, we call them lugs, not nearly as poetic, but they're just little additional uh, accents. And originally in vessel history, the lugs or the mimi were used to tie down a lid. So you'll see that in just a minute. But I'm getting there. So now I've scored and slipped everything. Of course, the larger the slab, the larger the piece, the more um, time it takes for scoring and slipping and all of that. So I'm just going to, I've got this here, and um, I'm going to put this back over, and then I'm going to take this and lift it up, and it's going to go over my, my piece. Yes, very nice, perfect fit. It's that whole thing about measuring, I guess. And I'm just going to roll it in. Make sure the one edge gets tucked under the other. That's good. And it didn't, you know, it, it got a little bit um, angled a bit. Let's see if I can move that down a bit. Let's see if I can. 
No, it's I joined it too successfully there. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna not gonna even the theme the seam out. I'm just gonna press it together. And so now, now I've made the piece, which is great. And um, but the next step is I have to put it on here. And if I just attach it, I won't be able to get this out because the taper is reversed, the narrow parts on top. So what I do is I just lift the piece off and set this aside bring over my base and now I have to be really gentle with it because it really does want to collapse at this point. I don't want it to collapse so I want to be really gentle with it. And I'm just going to join this and you can see I've got a little bit of, you know, before I join it now, I'm going to take, see if I can save the newspaper. I always like to do that if I can. I don't have to. You can leave the newspaper in and then it can become, um, it'll just burn up in the firing, but I got that out, which is good. And then I'm going to just take this and set it down. It's getting a little squishy. I got a little bit carried away there, but it should be okay. Fold that up. And then I'm going to take my um, I'm going to take my steel rib here. This is a nice way to do this. And as I go around, and you know, hang on a second, stay there, don't fall over, just stay right there. So I'm going to turn around. Here. Don't you fall over? Okay. And this will make our life just a little bit easier, a little turntable here. It's kind of nice to have all these things right where you need them. And I'm just going to take this and lift that up. And then with my steel rib here, I can slide under and just, just work this up here. You can see there's a little bit of collapse down there, which I might be able to work out of it, or I can just keep it there. Um, and then I'm just going to push this up like that. So there's a number of things we can do. We could, um, let me, let me tilt the camera so you can see the top of this too. So as we look at it, I could leave this here, this detail and have it have a little flare. I might try that. Um, if I don't like it, I can cut it off and do it differently. So I'm just joining the base now. And there's a couple of things I'll point out. Um, when it's this thin and this tall, it's quite easy as you work it for it to start to collapse. So you can see a little bit of a fold in here. You can see where my hands were, as I was pulling the paper out, I squeezed a little bit here. And maybe that's not the, right, right there. It's a little bit squeezed in. So there's a couple of ways to possibly work with that. and. Uh, so um, let me get a tool. Here's an interesting tool. This might work. This is just happened to be here. I don't know if I can get, yeah, I can get this down there and just push it out in those areas that collapsed a little bit. And I can even go all the way down to the bottom maybe and push that out a little bit. Get that out. Get that little collapse out of there. And I can get most of that done. But the clay is going to want to continually, uh, increasingly collapse as I work with it. So I want to stop working. I don't, I got to be very delicate now. But that's looking really sweet now. Um, so I'm going to look, you see I have a big swing on the base here as, I, as it goes up. And I think I kind of like that. But we'll see on the side whether I do or not. And you really want to pay attention to your scoring and slipping and your and your joining because if um, in a wood firing everything you know every every joint will be tested. So let me just do this little trick here. So that's good. I popped it up a little bit here, but it, it helps blow out the sides a little bit, and it Just puffs it out a little bit. I kind of like that. Get a little play on my mouth, perhaps, and my, my mustache, my beard. So I'm just kind of reinforcing the joint here a little bit as we go along. I've got a nice texture from that. You can see me take out a little bit of that dent right there. 
Very nice. So I'm kind of liking that. That's looking really good. So two things to do now. One is to work out the, the lip. Um, and the other is, it's got a little bit of a tilt to it, which I can drop out of there. The other um, thing I can do now is, um, is make those lugs I talked about. So, and I keep pushing it in, so I keep pushing it out. Let's see. Right. It's looking good. So now, I said I would try to see if I like that angle, if I can keep that angle. It's kind of nice that it matches the swing of the base that I put in there. So I'm going to score and slip this. And this is a slightly different technique that I'll do here. We'll see. I've been slightly different than what I did for the cup loop. Um, what I'm going to do, oh, I kind of like that. It's got a little, I don't think you can see it, a little bit of a curve right along here, which is very sweet. I think that's quite nice. Um, yeah, that's, that's about right. It's a little big, so I'm going to cut inside of that just a little bit. So this is my lip here. And I'm gonna and stretch it out a little bit. Even this I can stretch just by throwing it down a little bit. It's a little thinner and a little bigger. So this is a slightly different approach than what I did with the cup. The cup I made a, a strip and now I've got a circle. And watch how I deal with this. Kind of interesting. Lots of slip again. I've scored and slipped a lot. Well, you can't see me scoring and slipping, but you've seen that. You know what that looks like. So here I have it. I'm going to put slip at the top here. And then so we just have a couple more things to work with. This top. Again, I need a lip at the very top that says, ta-da, it's done. I don't want it to just end. So this is how I do that. I put this here. So it's, you can see it's on there. I want to make sure it's pretty well centered. It's a little bit over this side here. I like it there. Yeah. Okay, well, that bit. And then I'm going to join it all the way around the outside. Just make sure that it is Fold it over the edge nicely, all the way around. Try to protect the deckled edge that I've created. Really get that pressed onto the walls all the way around. Something a little, just a little phallic, perhaps. That could be problematic. We'll see. And now what I'm doing is I'm just pushing in the top here, just dimpling it. And I'm gonna, that's gonna stretch the clay inward. And eventually I'm gonna get a hole. I'm just tapping, tapping and dimpling and tapping and dimpling. And I'll see if I can move this to show you and see what I've been doing. There's a little dimple in there. A little risky because this whole thing is pretty soft and fragile. And then when I get a hole, I then can just push all of this to join and it makes it so soft. It's a beautiful soft lip. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So there's my opening. And let's take a look one more time. And that's what the lip looks like. See how soft that is? It's really lovely looking. So there's my vase. It just needs 
Yeah, it does have a little bit, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So it does have a little bit of a, a phallic thing. I think that comes mostly from that angle. Um, but, you know, in for a penny. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little ball. Watch this trick. This is a really great trick. I love this. And I'm gonna take, I need a sharp edge. So you see a little tiny ball here. That might be too big. Um, uh, let's see, let me make it a little small. Maybe I'll take half of it. And for this trick, let's move this aside. Oop, I just jammed it. It's okay. For this trick, I've got these little balls. Take a look at how small these are, these little tiny, little tiny ball. And here's another one. Easy to find a second one. There it is. And then I'm going to take my, my needle tool. Hopefully the handle is clean. And I'm going to push my handle of my needle tool right through that ball. And you know, I was going to roll it, but I really like the way it looks just like this. I was going to roll it out, but I think this could be, it, it's got a softness to it from that push. And I think that's just what I want. So I'm going to leave it, you know, sometimes you discover something that isn't your intention. And if you're lucky, you pay attention and you go with it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to put, just put that right on there, right there. So. Um, the, the, um, the needle tool is still a very helpful part of this process. I'm going to score it, put some slip on it, and then very important, I have to press it for it to be joined well. Got to really press it in, but I want to um, have my thumb in there to support it. So you can see there's one a little accent called a lug or a mimi. I like the mimi. And then as I push this through, it gets so nice and puffy and a little bit of crackly texture. I like that very much. So I'm going to keep that. Let's see, that's what it looks like. A little crackly texture there. And then I'm going to score it. And I'm gonna put some slip on it. Let me do the same over here. I wanna to try to get it pretty much directly across from the other one. And start that. Let's pretty get up and see if I'm fairly accurate for that. And then I'll slip it. And so. I'll just push that on there. See how that looks. Looks pretty good. So there we go. Oh, that was a neat trick. I feel like a drummer in a band. So there it is. There's the, the vase with its little, its little Mimi. I might try putting them a little lower for the next one. And that's kind of a nice looking little, little vase there. Kind of accentuate that curve there, kind of like that. And um, so we've learned about um, how to make a simple vase. We've learned how to make a cup, everything but the trimming of the foot, which you've seen in another video. So this is what we've made. And uh, these are both great projects to do at home as long along with that little whiskey or sake cup. And so some things for you to be working on um, to make pieces for the wood firing or for whatever else you're doing. So that's it for now. Stay safe and be sure and make lots of art.